Welcome to the next lesson. This one is a little bit further of an explanation about your leasing company, also known as a captive finance company. So most major manufacturers create a finance company to help their dealers more easily sell the cars they build. So, you know, the, 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 the car manufacturer wants to sell more inventory through their dealerships. So they just create a bank that they provide easy lending to the customers of their dealership. So that way they can help the dealers sell more cars. They are known as captive finance companies because they will not lend to the general public. So they are captive to the dealership and only customers going through the dealership can have access to these finance companies, loans and leases. Um, like I said, they only lend to people buying cars from their own dealers and they call themselves because of this indirect lender. So they don't, you can't go directly to a captive finance company and apply for a loan and then go find the car. You have to go to one of their dealers, find the car, do the credit application through the dealership. And that's how you access the captive finance company indirectly through the dealer. And they are typically the preferred lender for leases. And the reason being is they're not like a normal bank. So they weren't created with the sole purpose of just making money on loans like a normal bank would. So they'll do things that are a little bit atypical from a normal bank. So they may give a lower interest rate with not as much concern on making money on the loan because they're trying to sell more cars. So they kind of have like a dual purpose. Now, don't get me wrong. They're profitable lenders. They make money on their loans. They don't do, you know, they don't shoot themselves in the foot like that, but th they'll give, like we talked about the residual values, they'll give inflated residual values. Later, you're going to learn about the money factor on leases. They'll give, you know, decrease money factors all with the motivation to encourage you know selling cars and selling leases and their primary purpose is to help the dealers sell their cars that is created by the manufacturer to make money flow more easily and they usually share the same name with the dealer which is why a lot of people get confused so like if you have a honda and your lease is with honda finance or honda financial services if you have a toyota your lease is with toyota finance nissan Nissan Finance, GM, GM Finance, so on and so forth. There's a lot of them. Um, and they often have a corresponding luxury brand like Honda and Acura or Toyota and Lexus or, or Nissan and Infiniti. And there's a bunch more. Um, and the options, you know, these are the same companies. So you can switch brands usually quite easily. Um, we're going to talk later about like third party restrictions and things like that. They usually don't apply between the two, you know, the, the sister companies, the, the, if you have the, 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 the regular car, you can go and get into the luxury brand with no problem. Um, and then they're all also traditional finance companies. So you, not all leases are going to be through one of those captive finance companies. Not all manufacturers have their own finance company. And you can still do leases with traditional lenders like Chase Bank, U.S. Bank, Ally Bank and more. Um, actually Subaru, as an example, doesn't have their own captive finance company. They do their auto leases through Chase Auto Finance. So if you're looking for a Subaru, your lease will most likely be with Chase. Um, and these lenders like Chase aren't obviously were not created by Subaru. So they don't have exactly the same relationship with the dealership that the captive finance companies do because they're not all owned by the same parent company, the manufacturer. So sometimes that can affect the end of lease options a little different. Sometimes it can free you up, right? The, the your, your lease with an outside bank may let you go anywhere at the end and trade it in with no third party restriction. Um, on the other hand, they may take some equity. So sometimes those outside lenders, when you try to trade the car in, the car has equity, they won't let you sell it at the same price that you could um, if you were with a different lender that you know doesn't do that and take the equity for themselves because they're not as concerned with keeping the deal, the manufacturing business. They're like a bank just trying to make money like a bank does. So all of those you know differences and all of those possibilities, the only real way for you to find out when you're leasing, if, you, if you're in a lease right now and want to know like what options do I have, you know, how do I know what I can and can't do? Um, you always need to be calling your leasing company, not the dealership. So regardless if you're with a captive finance company or you're with one of the non-captives, always get your information from the leasing company because the leasing company is who owns the car, not the dealership. And when you call into the, the, the finance company, the customer service reps that answer the phone, they're hourly employees and they're not making any commission on your next car. They do not work for the dealership. So they really have no loyalty or love for the dealer more than just they work for the same company and they can give you options that maybe your dealer won't tell you about like if you need to extend your lease like if a dealer's trying to sell you a car today and you want to do a six month extension well the dealer's probably not going to tell you about it because he wants you to have the urgency to need to buy the car now but if you call your finance company and say hey i need to keep shopping no problem let's get you on a six month month to month extension or, or longer we'll talk more about extensions later on and also with the payoff process like a lot of people that want to purchase a lease if you're in a lease and you want to purchase it at the end 
um, always call the leasing company for your for your options. Can I can I do a direct payoff and avoid going through the dealership? Can I trade it to a third party dealer? Like all of those type of scenarios, you want to get that information also from your leasing company and dealers. You know they'll just give customers self serving information, so they might tell you no to something that's a yes. And you're just asking the wrong party, so it's going to be very important as we go through this course that you remember. If you need to know anything in a lease you're already in, and you have a question about what you can or can't do, or what the terms of your contract are, call the leasing company. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next lesson.